We hear your man grunt, Aaron. Got a man grunt? Yeah, that's a man grunt right there if I've ever seen it. This man has got to be tough because he's going to be wearing this pretty, pretty girly blue blindfold, right? That's right. You're secure enough in your masculinity. You can handle this, right? All right. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to blindfold you, all right? All right. Wait a minute, everybody. All right. Here we go. All right, can you get a close-up of him right there, Matt? Wave at Matt right there. I know you can't see him right there. Can you see me? How many fingers am I holding up? All of them. There we go. Okay. All right, here's what we're going to do. You see, my buddy Aaron has got a problem. Anybody want to know what his problem is? He can't see. He is blind. This is not just the physical but this is the spiritual. Now, how many of you know what it means to be spiritually blind? Anybody here know what it means to be spiritually blind? I'm going to tell you what it means to be spiritually blind today. Something different than physically blind. Because physically blind means you can't see anything. Aaron can't see nothing. Can you see anything, Aaron? No? You can't see nothing? You can't see nothing? Can you see anything? You know what I'm doing to you? No? I'm wiping boogers on you. Just kidding. All right, so he can't see anything because he is physically blind. But there are people who are what we call spiritually blind. They can't see anything in their spirit. How many of you know what I mean when I say that you're being attacked of the devil? Does anybody know what it means to have an attack of the devil? Kelton, what's it mean to be attacked of the devil? Hold on. Microphone, microphone. What's it mean to be attacked by the devil? To be tempted and stuff like that. To be tempted by the devil, that's good, that's good, that's good. How about once you've already been tempted? Adam and Eve were tempted by the serpent in the garden. And once Adam and Eve was tempted by the serpent in the garden, they actually took the fruit of the tree and they went... <coughs> and after they swallowed that, all of a sudden they were blinded by the enemy. And they believe that they were okay. And she takes the fruit to her husband and she goes, Hey, baby, this stuff's good. You want to buy it? <laughs> and he says, Well, it didn't do nothing to you. So, mm. And then all of a sudden, they both found out they were naked. <gasps> and so they go running into the bushes and they make some aprons out of fig leaves. Itchy. I mean, I'm not good with nature. I would have probably done it with poison oak and been scratching for days. That would have probably been what happened to me. But they were blinded. They became blinded by the enemy, and they made a wrong choice. And so how many of you in here can say, you know, I've made some wrong choices before. I've been blinded by Satan. See, it's easy to become spiritually blind and make bad decisions. And so my buddy Aaron is going to represent somebody today who is spiritually blind. Somebody who cannot see. And so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to take my buddy Aaron here. Because how I many of you know Brother Aaron's going to need some help, right? Over here, buddy. I'm going to lead you this way. All right. You trust me? No. I'm good. <laughs> you shouldn't for today's experience, especially. We're going to take you all the way back here. Sister Amy, can you come take him by the hand and put him right in front of you? All right. All right. All right. All right. <clears throat> and turn him around and face this way. You see, Aaron is now getting ready to face a road. This aisle way right here is a road. Aaron, you familiar with this road? You're familiar with this aisle, right? You know exactly what this aisle walks. You could walk it blindfolded to the altar and back, right? Okay, why don't you walk that aisle right now, farmer? Just walk that aisle. He's doing a good job, isn't he? Do you know where the altar's at? Well, you gonna find it? Good job. Okay. Now turn around and go back down that road where you came from. See, there are people who think they can walk blindfolded because they know everything. Aaron says, yeah, I know that aisle. I got that aisle. But Satan has also got something that uh, he likes to throw in your path. Can you do me a big favor? Hold that and go back over there and stand next to Aaron. You hold that and stand over there next to Aaron on the other side. Point those arrows down this road right here. Anybody tell me what those signs say? 
Warning! It's the road to destruction. You know, there are some good people who come to somebody who is blinded by sin, blinded by the enemy, and they try to throw up warning signs. They say, hey, Aaron, don't go that way. That's destruction. But you know, Aaron has something in his hands that we all would like to have our hands on. Aaron's got some things. One thing he's got, he's got his health. Are you sick, Aaron? No, Aaron's got his health. He's doing really, really good. He's healthy. Nothing's wrong with him. You know what else Aaron's got? Aaron's got his family. Still have your mom and your brothers. I mean, he's got his family. Things are going good for him. He's got his family. Aaron doesn't have a doubt in the world. Everything's going to be all right because Aaron's got his peace. Isn't it great to have peace of mind at night? Aaron's got something else. Aaron has his eternity ahead of him. Aaron's not dead yet. He's got all of eternity. That means that after we die, we can live forever with Jesus Christ. Aaron has all of those things except for one problem. He's getting ready to walk down the road of destruction and he's blindfolded. Aaron, reach out your hand and take these things right there. Aaron has got some great things in his life. And you know, he's got two good friends over there who are trying to help him and say, hey, warning, road to destruction. This is what happens when if you've been out and you did something wrong, like let's just say you stole something, and you have a good friend of yours goes, hey, you shouldn't steal. Stealing is wrong. They're holding up a sign that says, warning, road to destruction, don't do that. What happens if you're in school and you're, you cheat on a test, and one of your friends comes to you and says, man, you shouldn't cheat. You're going to get trouble. Warning, road to destruction. Your mom and dad Say, hey, you got to come to church with him this morning. We're going to have a great time at church. I don't want to go to church. <gasps> but you shouldn't do that. You should want to come to church because we all love Jesus and we want you to have a relationship with Jesus. What is that? Warning! Road to destruction! We try to throw up warning signs to tell everybody about these things and we're good at showing the warning signs. How many of you are good at telling somebody what to do? Huh? I'm telling you what to do. You may not be good at telling yourself, but you're good at telling somebody else what to do, right? Yeah. Warning, road to destruction. Don't do that. Don't lie. Don't steal. We'll run through the whole entire Ten Commandments. Oh, don't say that dirty word. Warning, road to destruction. we got some great Christians out there who think they're doing the very best they can by waving those warning signs and saying, road to destruction, road to destruction. We well, you know there are some distractions that's going to get into our way. There are some major distractions that get in people's way. Aaron for a long time though is he's got this problem where he wants things that are not his and he wants to steal. He doesn't see anything is wrong with stealing because he's blinded right now, right? It's because he's blinded he doesn't see that there's anything wrong with stealing. There's another thing that's been going on in his life because he started a few problems at school, and uh, he's not been doing his homework. And it's been stressing him out. Also, because school's been so rough, he started telling a few lies. Lying to his mom and dad, telling them that, oh yeah, I'm doing my homework, but he's really not. And because of those lies, it's been getting him in all kinds of trouble. And all of this 
is going to wind up eventually leading to him not having eternity in heaven, but he's going to wind up walking down the road of destruction that will lead to death. There's a problem with all of this. The biggest problem is this poor Aaron is blind. He's got two great friends over there telling him, get a good close-up of his two great friends over there. He's got two great friends telling him, warning, this is the road to destruction. You don't have to have all this stress. Just quit stealing. Quit telling lies. Eventually, things will work out okay for you. You won't have to have death. But all of those things are waiting in Aaron's path. And as he walks down this path, keep warning him, guys, with those signs. Aaron, I want you to begin to walk down this road. Carrying your blessings that you have. Come on up here and bring those things to the altar, Aaron. Because there are things that are getting in your path that you got to be careful about. Because there's things that are going to try to trip you up. <laughs> those things are stopping you from getting to where you need to be. And the biggest obstacle of all you haven't met yet. Because that biggest obstacle that you have to face is the devil when you get down to the end of that road. And the devil wants to get a good grip on you because if those things don't trip you up, he's got more waiting for him. But he's got a good friend. A good friend, Jenna, that's been praying for him. Who's ready to do more than just warn him about the road of destruction. You know what I'm talking about? A friend who's been praying that the blinders would come off. The blinders would come off. Because you see, the enemies robbed him of all of those things. And they're gone now. Because he's made it through that road of destruction. And now he's at his lowest point ever because he's facing the enemy one-on-one. -on -one. The enemy's got him in a headlock and so not about to let go. Anybody ever felt like you or anyone in your family has been put in a headlock by the devil and you can't get let go? Because the devil's holding on to you with everything that is inside of you. But he's got a friend that learned today's power verse. He's got a great friend that learned the power verse today and said that he, she knew she needed to be interceding for him. And when you intercede for somebody, God does something like you've never seen before. He rips the blinders off of you and allows you to be able to see the road that you were on. He allows you to not only be able to see that, but the destruction that you are facing. And because of that, your friend gets to give you back the things that you lost. Your health, your family, your peace, and your eternity gets returned to you. All because somebody took the time to pray and intercede. And when they intercede, they remove the blinders. Who's the best friend? The one with the signs of saying, warning, road to destruction, or the one who helped rip the blinders off? Who do you want to have as your friend? Who is it? You want this one right here who is taking the blinders off. You want this friend right here. Not the ones holding signs and telling you what all you're doing wrong. You want the one who's going to pray for you. They may not have to come to you and say anything, but she's going to pray for you because guess what? It was her prayers that changed this situation. It was her prayers that caused him to avoid all of these pitfalls. And when he finally lost it all, it was her prayers that allowed those blinders to come off and he was able to see what was going on. It was that road of destruction that was about to destroy him. These two friends were right. What you're doing is wrong. That's a road of destruction. Warning. They were right, but they weren't the right help. The right help doesn't say, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong, and you're doing this wrong. The right help says, I'm going to pray for you. Oh, you might say, warning, that's a road of destruction. You don't want to go that way. But if you just do that, you've done no good. It's like if Trinity come up to me and she says, I'm thirsty. And I could tell, I mean, she's parched, her tongue's hanging out, and she's like, hey, I'm so thirsty. And I go, well, I hope you find something to drink. That's done no good. But if I say, here, here's some water, then I've helped her.